When I won the Indy 500 back in 1986, I was fortunate to have a really great engineer. Today, the role of the engineer has become even more important, as is your ability to work hand-in-hand -hand with your engineer to get that perfect setup. Well, one of the most important things to being a race car driver is not, not even driving on the track, but relating what happens on the track to your engineer and to your crew. And during a practice session especially, or during a race if there's a problem, it's very important to be able to communicate quickly. And having those relationships built through testing and through the practice days can be key when you're trying to get your team to help you during the race. The technical side of a race car is really important nowadays. There's so much data that you're able to see and, and, and so much that you can learn from each session out that, that having the knowledge and being able to understand and relate to your, to your engineer and, and relay the proper information from, from what you're feeling to him is crucial. As I've gained experience over the years, uh, you know, I've learned a lot about engineering a car and understand what changes to the car setup uh, do feeling-wise. So, um, you know, the relationship between a driver and his engineer is so important and uh, you really need to be on the same page, understanding each other and, and working as, as one single team moving forward. So we talk a lot and, uh, you know, never be afraid to let it out and let your engineer know what, what you're feeling. Nowadays what you want to hear is just the driver telling you what the car's doing. Uh, drivers who try and engineer the car themselves don't often have great success because the driver can't be fully up to speed on all the things that are on the car, what the damper or shock curves are, what springs you've got on or anything like that. So they, they can't keep on top of that like an engineer can. So you rely on the driver just telling you the car's doing this, it's, it's loose here or it's pushing there or whatever and keep it fairly concise so that the engineer knows what the biggest problem he needs to work on is. What I don't want is a, someone to come in and try to over-engineer the car or impress us with his engineering capabilities. I want the truth. Tell me the truth what the car's doing. It's pushing, it's loose, entry, exit. Tell me the exact thing it's doing and don't try to tell me the roll couple's off front rear because you have no idea what you're talking about. There's a certain level that you like the driver to have you know, regarding the engineering of the car. I, you don't necessarily need a math professor by any means, but you do, you, you need to be able to converse on a, on a certain level. So it's important that the driver understands, you know, certain mechanical concepts, nothing, nothing too in-depth, but is able to convey to the engineer what he means and what parts of the car may be doing it and what all those parts might do on the car. Um, there's also a point where a little bit of information is very dangerous. And so as an engineer, sometimes you have to sort of temper what they're, you know, temper what a driver says with a little bit of reality. You have to stop and explain certain concepts because they're not, not all concepts with vehicle dynamics are easily understood. There isn't necessarily, not everything is very straightforward and we don't expect drivers to understand that stuff. A lot of the experienced drivers have some knowledge they've picked up over the years and they're pretty good at telling you exactly what the car is doing and you know, what they feel and all that kind of thing. So in the back of their mind, they probably know the kind of things they're thinking of that needs to fix it. But then the engineer comes back with what he thinks and if they're wildly different, you can have a discussion on the subject. But most, the good drivers are all pretty smart. The biggest thing that a driver can do when he comes in at the end of a session or end of an outing is um, be concise in his description of what's going on. You know. Does he feel the front needs more work, the rear needs more work, it needs grip? Uh, it's, it's being as specific as possible. It's tough for an engineer to fix a bad car. I, you don't know what bad is, but if you can come in and say, the front end doesn't grip at entry or it's oversteering at exit, that's the biggest help an engineer can have is knowing exactly where he needs to work on the car. We write a report after every single session. So you gotta get good at that, you gotta get very accurate at that. And, and so that means when you drive and you're testing, hopefully you're not at 101% and your mind is fully focused on driving, you need to be more like at 95% and taking in everything that car's doing. Did it oversteer on the way in here? Did it push there? So when you take that information back to the engineers, they can make proper changes to the car. Understanding each other, uh, your, your disposition or, or your mannerisms, but also your language. You need to have consistent language. Uh, in racing, oftentimes we end up racing in Europe where you use very different terminology to explain what the car is doing. You might race on a dirt oval where you say loose off. 
in road course racing in Europe, you have oversteer at the exit. So you very much have to have a, a vast language. And that's part of the, the driver-engineer relationship is it's the engineer's job to separate out a lot of the noise. You know, the driver comes in and wants to be helpful, and so he tells you every single thing that's going on with the car. And of all those things, if he tells you 10 things, there's probably one or two that you need to address to fix the car. So when you hear it pushes in a little bit, and then I pick up the throttle, and then maybe it's a little loose, but sometimes it's not a little loose. All those words that he said after push don't matter. The one that the engineer heard was understeer. I can fix the understeer and the rest of the stuff will go away. You know, I think every driver wants something slightly different from a car. Um, and Indy cars, obviously, you can tailor it exactly to, to what you want. When you come here to, to the, something like the, the Rolex 24, you've all got to make do with, with uh, you know, what, what you have and you've all got to compromise in some way. Um, but Scott and I, for instance, Scott is very happy on both the oval and the road course to drive a very oversteery car. Um, the more oversteer for Scott, the better. He doesn't really complain about uh, oversteer. He's always complaining about understeer. So me, I like a, a more solid rear in the car. Everybody likes it a little different. You know, they feel the car a little different. Some feel it from their bums, some feel it from their hands. You know, it, it, it's totally different. But uh, I definitely like a very neutral car. I don't like to have to turn too much or wait, especially at the apex. Um, whereas, you know, Dario always likes a very secure entry, um, not have to worry about the rear, and then also very good power down. But, uh, you know, when you, when you look at it and how different the car setups can be sometimes, and the, the difference in qualifying can be a few one hundredths, it's pretty crazy how it all comes together. But, uh, yeah, I like a loose car. There should definitely be a focus on your safety in, in every race car that you ever climb into. I focus on making sure that uh, every variable that I can think of at least is taken care of. Safe is fast in all of these situations. Making sure that you've got the proper padding in the car, that you're wearing the proper safety equipment, and that the car is as mechanically sound as you can, as you can make it uh, is of utmost importance.